Welcome. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. As we speak, rescuers are getting ready to go inside a ship that capsized off the Louisiana coast. That search for survivors has lasted for two and a half days already. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is in New Orleans. David, good morning to you. So you're telling us there is still hope that some missing crew members may be alive and possibly in the ship? Yeah, Tony, and here's what it's based on. Tuesday when the ship capsized, the Coast Guard dropped five life jackets and five radios down to five men that they saw on the ship. And the last radio transmission was from two of the men who said we're going back into the hull of the ship. So right now, we're told that divers are at the ship. They're going to try and make access entry into that hull. There could be pockets inside of there in the living quarters area where some of those men are still alive. I heard from someone that was was rescued that they are in the boat. All 12 members should be on that boat waiting to be rescued in, in, in the rooms with the air. This is Marion Kyler. She's the fiance to missing crew member Chaz Morales. She's holding out hope that those missing might be in sealed airtight pockets inside the boat. Two of the members that are on the boat were in the uh, engine room, which is up at the top by the water. But it's not clear if anyone inside is alive. These photos show Coast Guard crew members throwing hammers at the capsized lift boat in an effort to contact any survivors. Divers also tapped the hull, but they never heard any responses. He just really needs to be, I, I can't go without him. <laughs> it's how I feel. With a rosary wrapped in her hand, Hannah Despot is keeping vigil, waiting for news about her husband, Dylan. The father of three is one of the 12 missing crew members that was on the Sea Corps powerboat. Dylan turned 30 on Sunday. You know, Despot is not waiting alone. There are other family members gathered at a firehouse near Port Fouchon, Louisiana, and some of them have been there since Tuesday. I don't want to leave until we have some type of answer. Dylan Daspit's father, Scott, decided he was done waiting. He chartered a boat on his own and went out to find his firstborn son. He's got the spirit to make it, but I'd just like to know if, he, if he's on the water, I'm going to find him. And he's got a one-year-old and a two-year-old. Love their daddy very much. Mr. Scott Daspit got close enough to see the shipwreck, but he couldn't get close enough to actually help, so he came back on shore. We talked to him last night. He said the Coast Guard told him when they get into the hull this morning, those divers get in there, it's going to almost be as if they're blindfolded and they're kind of going, touching like this, going room to room to see if anyone is alive. You hear the, the thunder behind me? The weather has hampered the search every day since the ship capsized on Tuesday. Let's hope the weather holds, y'all, so they can finally give these families yeah. Yeah. some closure today. Hopefully the word is everybody's alive. Yeah, I ho hope, hope, so. hope is the word of the day, David. Thank you very we much. We saw the thunder and the lightning. Yeah, you feel for lightning. those families. Yes. Those waters in the early days were just treacherous. It's, yeah. it's the waiting part that has to be agonizing. Yeah. You just yeah. need to know.